People have been abandoning the mainstream media for years now, and it's easy to see why. Their hypocrisy is on full display for everyone to observe. They are no longer even trying to be objective. Everything they accuse the right of doing is exactly what they, in fact, are doing on the left. Of course, part of me says, is it possible they just have zero self-awareness? And the other part of me says, no, absolutely not. They're in bed with big government. They're in bed with big tech. They're in bed with the radical leftist fringe. They're always trying to spin that narrative to progress their agenda, all right? And it's completely insane to see. But what we're going to look at today is Rachel Maddow and her crack team of law experts talking about day one of Donald Trump's trial with a complete lack of self-awareness. So let's go ahead and check this out. The strategy from <laughs> Trump's team, at least as I understood it today, seems to be to normalize outlandish things, which is keeping in, you know, tandem with what Donald Trump has done to this country, which is to normalize the abhorrent and abnormal, right? I was really struck, not only by this this sort of, the, the, the pecker of it all, I'm sorry to have you <laughs> saying the word pecker, but, um, you know, the... At one point, at one point, we're like six watching. years old when everybody knew what this was. I was like, is she having an outbreak? <laughs> I'm just Catholic. Day 25 Jesus. of Pecker. Um, yeah. The arguing that NDAs are just a common practice, oh. that lots of wealthy people do them. This is nothing abnormal. Everybody has NDAs. You guys may not have heard about them before, but it happens. This is a thing that is done. Just because Trump had a bunch of people signing NDAs doesn't mean there's anything suspect about that. Yes, NDAs are completely normal, especially when dealing with wealthy people or large organizations. I'd be willing to wager that every single cackling hen on that panel and the gilded man all have NDAs, all to protect MSNBC from their craziness if they ever feel like they are done untoward by their company. They wouldn't be able to go out and start a competing network. They wouldn't be able to go out and join another network for a certain period of time. They wouldn't be able to badmouth MSNBC to other news organizations. That's what the NDA is there for, to protect the person fronting all of the money and all of the cost and all of the risk. So these ladies clearly don't understand their contracts that allow them to be on air with MSNBC in the first place. Catch and kill. It happens all the time. There's nothing illegal about this scheme. This sort of thing happens all the time. This is from Todd Blanche's mouth to the jury. And then my favorite, there is nothing wrong with trying to influence an election it's called democracy. Mm -hmm. That is not how the world works, Todd Blanche. That is maybe the argument they're going to use because time and time again, telling the American public over and over again, there's nothing to see here. I mean, look, he had impeachments one and two. He didn't get convicted. And I think that they believe if you just keep telling people this is just how it works, right. maybe yeah. they can get off. They, they, they can get away with it. The difference between then and now is this is a criminal trial and you are held to a different standard. But I was flabbergasted that this is the best they could come up with when faced with a lot of material from the prosecution. All right, we'll talk more about that catch and kill in a little bit, but I love how she says, oh, you're not allowed to influence an election. That's not normal. That's not democracy. Well, what do you call ads, political ads, right? What do you call rallies, all right? Those are all ways to influence the election. And don't forget that Hillary Clinton actually funded that Steele dossier. Was that intended to influence the election? But of course, it's okay when their side doesn't. But when Donald Trump actually tries to go out and have positive news stories run about him, then of course it must be stopped. Right? So the, on, on the point of the kind of journalism that AMI does, yeah. I, I mean, it's today when David Pecker was on the stand, he is the one who volunteered the phrase checkbook journalism. Yes. He is describing this of his own accord. This is what we do. We pay for sources. This is, you know, National Enquirer has no shame about this. AMI has no yeah. shame about this. This is what they do. But they do sometimes, they do sometimes with people other than Donald Trump, find out negative information yes. about a person and then decide not to run it. And mm -hmm. why do they do that? Because they want to have that person consent mm. to be on their magazine covers right. for yeah. other reasons. Yeah. And so it's they want to own thing. them. They've yeah. done this about, right. about, about Cosby. Bill Cosby, yes. they had a bunch of bad information about him. They did not run it in exchange for Cosby then doing exclusives mm -hmm. with them. They had a bunch of bad information on Arnold Schwarzenegger, did not run it in exchange for Schwarzenegger doing a bunch of stuff with them. There's claims in the New York Times that I had not seen before this, this weekend that they had done the same thing with Tiger Woods. Mm -hmm. They wanted Tiger Woods to do things. He sold magazines, and so they held the information they had on him. So they've done this vague pattern, this 
big scale pattern with other people. The difference is when they did it with Donald Trump, they only did it when it came to the election. Mm -hmm. Prosecutors said today in their opening statement they had never before paid anybody for any information related to Donald Trump. And when it came to keeping Donald Trump on the good side, what, they, what that meant, what that meant, keeping Trump happy, what were they paying to make all these stories go away for? It wasn't to get Donald Trump exclusives in their magazine. Right. It was to help Donald Trump win the election. And that is when it became a crime. That is why AMI had to get limited immunity. That is why Donald, that is why Michael Cohen had to go to prison because they weren't just trying to keep him happy the way they were trying to keep Cosby and right. Tiger Woods happy. They were trying to keep him happy by making him president. Okay, so MSNBC doesn't pay anyone to get them news stories. They don't have an entire staff of people combing through articles, right? Receiving phone calls, receiving emails, receiving information. They don't have people checking on news stories. They're not paying for that information. Of course they are. And when you talk about, oh, it was all just to get Donald Trump elected, and that's what made it illegal. What about every single media outlet running positive stories about Joe Biden and negative stories? stories about Donald Trump. As we can see over here, we have Media Research Center saying that 89% of coverage of Donald Trump is in fact negative. Is that trying to sway an election? Should that be considered illegal? Does MSNBC need to be granted immunity for that process? Of course not, because it's on your side and therefore okay. And of course, also don't forget that journalists tend to align with the Democratic Party. You only have 3.4% of journalists identifying as Republican, all right, and doing the quick math on that, that's 96.6% who are left-leaning, maybe some independent, all right, but that is a huge gap. So all you people out there on the left, in the mainstream media, you're saying, oh, Donald Trump tried to sway this election with one newspaper, The Inquirer. Everyone knows what The Inquirer is. It's a rag. But because Donald Trump was friends with the publisher at the time, and he ran some positive news stories about Donald Trump in an attempt to influence the election, like every other mainstream media news source has been doing for Biden, for Obama, for Clinton for any other Democratic candidate, all of a sudden now, as they say, oh, it's a criminal trial. That's what makes it different. It is strange, right, at one level, because like the, the, the covers you showed, mm -hmm. that, that is, you know, to the point about like influencing elections called democracy. Like, you can have like your best homie running a magazine and he just puts you on the cover every day to get you elected. Like, that is actually America. Mm -hmm. Like, that's, that is perfectly fine. And that's been happening since the founders. It's the fact that this was explicitly a campaign undertaking that was designed, that, that, that couldn't be disclosed along the lines as campaign expenditures are regulated, yep. that has turned into a crime. And where the rubber hits the road, to go back to the Weisselberg notes, is they, if, if it weren't that, they could have just written the reimbursement right. check. Okay, so the argument is it's totally fine to put someone's face on the cover of a magazine to sell it, even for the purpose of getting elected, but it's not okay because the magazine did it for free or possibly to be in the good graces of Donald Trump, at which point Donald Trump should have just cut a check and then it would have been okay and this case would have gone away. No, Alvin Bragg would have brought it anyway. So let's bring up Alvin Bragg in this totally legitimate trial <laughs> as Jonathan Turley comments here. Trump, Trump insists that there's coordination between Bragg's office and Washington. Bragg's office says, no, 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 there's no coordination. Yet, what do we see at trial today? The <laughs> prosecution being led in part by Matthew Colangelo, who was the former associate uh, attorney general of the United States, who gave up that plum position to go back and become a state prosecutor. D does that seem a little unusual? Well, you can only imagine how, what Trump was thinking. This is like playing uh, poker with someone with their cars, cards facing outward. I mean, the first person they bring up is the very guy that they got from the Biden Justice Department who's leading this effort. And that only reaffirms and supports this narrative, right, that uh, this is all coordinated. It's, it's a mystery to me why they would do that, except there is a chilling reality here. It doesn't matter. It's New York.
<laughs> it's like we're beating a dead horse here at this point. The case is weak as water, and it's all just political lawfare from the Biden administration. Because don't forget, as we pointed out several times before on this channel, Alvin Bragg went to the White House before indictments were passed down on Donald Trump. And now you have, of course, a former Biden prosecutor coming out and leading the charge with his opening statements against the Trump team. Right? So all of this, of course, stinks to high heaven, but don't worry. It's all to defend democracy from that horrible Donald Trump. So that's okay. Show me the man and we'll show you the crime. So as usual, stay safe out there, people. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe, because they're coming after you.